Hello everybody, welcome back to my survival kingdom. This is Mindfruit here, back for another video. Um, today is not going to be one of the actual Let's Plays. It's going to be more of a tutorial, even though I'm in the world, and it's going to be all about what to put in your ender chest. First things first, what is an ender chest? An ender chest is a chest that is crafted from eight obsidian and a ring and an eye of ender in the middle of it, and it can be opened just like this, and it has 27 spots in it. Ender chests must be collected with a silk touch pickaxe, or else it will only drop 8 pieces of obsidian. But the special thing about ender chests is that no matter where you are, they will always have the same things inside of it. So if you had 100 ender chests, they would all have the same contents. That's not to say that you can multiply your items 100 times. If you take one of the shulker boxes out, it will be out of all of the other ones. So basically, it is a way of ensuring that things are safe, and even if you destroy all of the ender chests in your world, if you create a new one, it'll still have all the same stuff in it. So basically, anything that's in there is indestructible. So, you're probably thinking, well, this is crazy, this is so OP, and what do I do with it, though? Well, I like to always have an ender chest on me, and for that reason, I like to put the most important things to me in it. Um, and the most useful things. So, number one, have a bed in it. This has saved me so many times. I constantly find myself needing a bed and having one in an ender chest that I can just take out quickly and sleep in is awesome. A crafting table is also a great idea to keep in an ender chest. Uh, they are super useful and if you don't want to go chop down a tree really quick or access your wood shulker box, then having a crafting table is super nice and handy. I also like keeping shulker shells on it. Um, as opposed to keeping them in a shulker box, because if the shulker box gets destroyed, I don't want these destroyed. But these are just nice if you decide that you need a little bit of extra storage. You can just craft some of these up with some chests in your wood box, and then you have some extra inventory space. So, as you also probably know, shulker boxes are also chests, except they can be picked up and the items in them will stay inside of them. Um, they do not require silk touch pickaxe, any pickaxe will be able to pick a shulker box up. So. As you can see, like this, you can put shulker boxes in ender chests. So technically, you can have 27 shulker boxes in ender chests, which is 27 times 27 slots, um, not including stacking items. So I'll probably put a few more shulker boxes in here of stuff, but this is just what I have so far. It is also a great idea to color code all of your boxes, kind of based on what's inside of them, and name all of them. It will really save you in the long run. First of all, a fireworks and torches box. So now I have a mini creeper farm, which supplies me with about half a chest of rockets in one night's AFK session, um, so that's not bad. So fireworks and torches, a great idea to have if you have an elytra, or if you don't, just have a torch box. Next up is the terracotta shulker box. This has one stack of each dyed variant of terracotta, all 16 of them, as well as the rest is filled with normal terracotta, which I can dye from my dye box, which brings me up to my next point, is to have a dye box. This dye box has around a stack of every single kind of dye, so if you ever need to dye concrete or terracotta or just have it for anything else, then you have this here. Um, and as you can see, it has all 16 dye variants, as well as a little bit extra of others. Next up is my valuables chest. This has diamonds, gold, redstone, lapis, coal, iron, and emeralds, all in a small quantity of. Next up is the vegetation chest, or as I like to call it, vegetation, because I'm that kind of guy. This has a few leaves in it, and it has all sorts of shrubbery and bushes, so it has dead bushes, sweet berries, a bunch of seeds, and a couple other things. So that's always nice to have if you want to start a little mini farm or you never know when you're going to need something. Next up is a grass and dirt box. Now this box currently doesn't have any grass in it because I haven't collected it up from my huge terraforming project out there, but it does have a ton of dirt in it and this is just nice if ever you want to do a little bit of terraforming if you ever want to do a little bit of terraforming or just need dirt for something. Next up is arguably one of the most important boxes, the gear box. Now this box has a bunch of my backup gear in case I ever die and I need it for something really quick. Um, this has a couple spare pickaxes which I still need to get a second silk touch pickaxe of, a few swords, um, one of which is for my enderman farm, uh, a spare elytra, as well as a spare set of rockets which I just added because I had forgotten. In case you happen to lose your, um, your fireworks box or can't access it and you need it for something, um, there's that. I need to fill this bucket of water, but at least two buckets of water to make an infinite water source, um, a bow with infinity, and some arrows, 
and my hope. Next up is the detailing box, which is not done yet, but as you can see, it has flower pots, flowers, leaves, buttons, trapdoors, iron bars, barrels, paintings, and cartography tables and crafting tables, which you may be wondering why, but actually I changed the sides of them to be the vertical variants of oak and dark oak planks. So if you throw those in some builds, then you can get some nice vertical plank action, which looks really nice. The concrete box. This box has all of the dyed variants of concrete powder, as well as some ingredients to make some more, um, some dyes, which probably can just go in my dye box, a pickaxe, and a water bucket in case I need to turn any of it into actual concrete as well. This is the adventure survival box. Um, but basically it has some golden apples, some totems, which I got from my raid, boats, uh, used to have enough obsidian for another portal, except then I used it, which I should probably restock. Um, some potions of healing and some horse stuff in case I ever need to ride a horse around because it's quicker. I have my food box, which is pretty self-explanatory. It's not very full yet, but hopefully over time with my wheat farm and my cow crusher, I'll be able to max it out. This is a wood box, which is arguably one of the other most important boxes. It has saplings, and with my bone box, I can grow any of these to get more logs. Um, I have almost a full stack of most of them, except for dark oak and birch. Um, and I have some scaffolding, which, yes, I know it's technically not wood, but I figured I'd throw it in here, even though I'm planning on making a scaffolding box. This box has cobblestone stone, and it used to have almost a full row of andesite, but I used some of it and a stone cutter so that I can turn any of these into the respective slabs or stairs. This is my lights box, which also isn't done yet because I still have yet to find an ocean monument and get sea lanterns as well as a few other light sources, but it has glowstone, shroom lights, end rods, lanterns, and campfires. Here's my bone box full of bone blocks. Hopefully I'll be able to get more in there, but each bone block converts into nine bone meal. So if you think about it, each one of these is nine stacks of bone meal. So that's a ton and way more than I'll ever need. Next up is building tools, which currently only has scaffolding and a stone cutter in it. You're going to see some repeats in some of the boxes, but hopefully when I think of more stuff that can be used for building, I'll add these to it. Next I have an oak in a spruce tree building box. Um, basically it's for making the custom trees of each respective one. This one still needs a lot more leaves, but I have some wood, logs, and fences, as well as some leaves to make custom spruce trees. And in this one I have the same, but for oak. I hope you all found this video helpful, and if you did, make sure to leave a like on it and subscribe. Let me know if you want to see more tutorials, more let's plays, or more creative builds, and I'll be sure to oblige because I love making the content that you guys want. So, until next time, peace out.